Okay, so far we've been finding the area uh, under a single function, and now what we're going to look at is finding the area between two functions. Now in this video we'll do it with vertical rectangles, <clears throat> in the next video we'll do it with horizontal rectangles. But let's look at a kind of a sample problem and see where it comes from. There's nothing, a whole lot really new here. Okay, first of all, let's suppose we had this. Uh, you've got a function f of x that looks something like this. Now, to find the area under that function between two limits a and b, we'll go ahead and stick those on the graph, they would look something like this. Now, you know how to find the area under a single curve. If you did it, it would be this little kind of shade in here. It'd be this green area right here. So if I wanted to find that green area, it would just be, uh, and we'll put it right up here, it would be the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And that's going to give me that green area. <coughs> now suppose you had this. Suppose you had a second function. So let's go ahead and put that on. Suppose we had a function g of x, and I wanted the area under the function g of x. Now what that would be, that would be this red area right here. So if I wanted that red area, what that would be, that would be the integral from a to b of g of x dx. So what I'm going to call these, we'll go ahead and call this one, uh, f of x is going to be what I'm going to call the top function, and g of x is what I'm going to call the bottom function. So you've got a top function and a bottom function. Now suppose you wanted this. Suppose you wanted the area between the two functions. So not the green area, not the red area, but this, we'll call it this blue area right in here. So what I want is the area between those two functions. Now really it's just going to be the area of the top function minus the area of the bottom function. So really all you do is just subtract these two. Find the top area, which would be this one right here. So that's the top area. And subtract from that the bottom area. So this is going to be the bottom area. Now, because they're evaluated from the same limit, you can put them together under a single integral. So we'll go ahead and make this be the integral from a to b of, and it'll actually look like this. We'll put it uh, in parentheses. This is going to be, I think I'll do these in red here. So this will be f of x, then minus... Uh, the bottom function, which would be g of x <coughs> dx. And this is actually the formula that we're going to use here today. So we'll put a little box around this thing. So this is going to be this uh, formula for today. Okay, now kind of an easy way to remember these, rather than remember long, I would always just generally remember it as this. It's the integral of, from a to b, of the top function minus the bottom function. And if you think about it like that, it makes the whole thing very easy to do. Now, they actually come in kind of two flavors. We'll take a look at each one of these. Um, Okay, the first example, let's do this. Now, if you're lucky, the problem will give you the limits. What I'd like to find here is here's two functions. I've got a top function and a bottom function. And I'd like to find the area between these two functions between 0 and 2. So I want to go from <clears throat> 0 to 2. Now, in this case, though, I know the limits. It actually gave me the limits. So if I drew a picture of this thing, it would look something like this. Uh, we'll go straight up from here. Now, since it gives you the function, you've got the top one and the bottom one. So the top one is just vertically whichever one is on top. So this will be the top function. This is going to be the bottom function. And I think I'll, let's see here, we'll go ahead and put... Uh, so just use your formula. It's the integral, basically, of the integral from 0 to 2 of the top function minus the bottom function. So the way we'll set it up, this will be the integral from 0 to 2 
Now, I like to put these in parentheses to make sure you remember to distribute that negative. Well, the top function is x squared plus 2 minus the bottom function is just, in this case, just x dx. So this one shouldn't cause you much trouble. Now, find the antiderivative of that. Now, actually, let's go ahead and distribute that negative first. It would be the 0 to 2 of x squared plus 2 minus x dx. So that's going to give you um, x cubed divided by 3 plus 2x minus x squared divided by 2, and that's going to be evaluated from 0 to 2. So evaluated from <clears throat> 0 to 2. So what that will be, uh, first of all, go ahead and plug in the 2. It's just like any other problem at this point. So we'll plug in the 2, and you've got 2 cubed uh, divided by 3 plus 2 times 2 minus 2 squared divided by 2. And then finally, now the second integral is all going to be 0 because you'll have 0 on each one of these. So 0 plus 0 minus 0, uh, when you plug it in, that second one goes to 0. So what this will be would be 8 thirds plus 4 uh, minus, and then 4 divided by 2 would be 2. So that's going to be 8 thirds um, plus 2, which would be 8 thirds plus 6 thirds, which would finally give you 14 <coughs> thirds. So 14 thirds. And again, visually what that's going to be that will be, <clears throat> and we'll shade it in blue here, that's going to be this area uh, in between these two functions. <clears throat> so when you get finished that, so 14 thirds. So basically, uh, the top function minus the bottom function, and nothing very hard about that one. Now what made that problem a little bit easy is the fact that they actually gave you the limits. You knew it went from 0 to 2. So if it gives you the limits, uh, problems are pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at a second problem where it does not give you the limits. You have to figure the limits out for yourself. Okay, now what this problem looks like is this. You've got two functions. Uh, you've got this first function, um, f of x is equal to 2 minus x squared, <clears throat> is just an upside down parabola. Uh, looks like this right here. So there's the first one. The second function is this straight line. So y is equal to x. Now, you want to find the area between these two functions, and we'll sort of lightly do it in green here. Uh, we want to find this area in here. <clears throat> but the problem is this. <clears throat> you don't know the limits. <clears throat> so you've got to go from this to this, and I have to integrate it from <clears throat> here to here. So this is going to go from here to here, but the question is, what are these limits? So if I go straight up from here, I need to know what is that value of x, and I'll go straight up down from here. Um, I need to know what is that value. So you need to know the two uh, x values. Now to find those, what you have to do is, the only way to find it is to find where these two functions intersect. So set the two functions equal to each other and solve for x. So, kind of a two-step process in this one. We'll write it down like this. So, step number one is to find the intersection points. So, where do these things intersect? So, the way to do that is take the, second, take the first function and set it equal to the second function and then solve for x. So, uh, and basically what you're doing is you're setting f of x equal to g of x. We'll solve this. This gives you, now take the negative x squared, move it over to this side, it becomes a positive x squared. Then you've got the x, here's a positive 2, move it over here, it becomes a negative 2. Now that you can factor, so it will factor into uh, x plus 2 
times an x minus 1. Now go ahead to solve this, set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So that's going to give you x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x is equal to a negative 2. Now there's one of your intersection points, and x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x is equal to 1, there's the second intersection point. So what that gives you, we'll put those over here. This point right here is negative 2. This point right here is 1. So you're going to integrate this from negative 2 to 1. Okay, now you're ready for step 2 to actually solve this thing. So we'll go on to step 2 here. So step 2. And what that's going to be, it's again just going to be find the integral of the top function minus the bottom function uh, with respect to x. And we know we're going to go from minus 2 to 1. So now it's just a matter of solving that. So let's run through this. So uh, I better leave it where you see that part. Okay, so this is going to be the integral from minus 2 to 1 of, now the top function is the function that's on top, vertically higher, in the interval that you're interested in. Well, we're interested in here, so this is going to be the top function right here, and this is going to be the bottom function over here, the function that's on the bottom during the interval that we're interested in, so the top and the bottom. So the top function would be 2 minus x squared minus the bottom function, which is going to be just x, dx. Okay, now it's just a matter of running through and solving that thing. So what this is going to be, we'll go ahead and first of all distribute that negative. So negative 2 to 1 of 2 minus x squared minus x dx. And find the antiderivative of that. So that's going to be 2x minus x cubed divided by 3 minus x squared divided by 2. And I want to evaluate that from minus 2 to 1. Okay, so go ahead and plug in the 1 and then plug in the negative 2. So this would be 2 times 1 minus 1 cubed divided by 3 minus 1 squared divided by 2. Then plug in the negative 2. So 2 times a negative 2 minus a negative 2 cubed divided by 3 minus a negative 2 squared divided by 2. So it looks like that. And at this point, it's just all algebra from here. <clears throat> so what this one will be, uh, this will be 2. Now, this becomes minus 1 third, and this one will become minus 1 half. Then minus, this will become a minus 4. <clears throat> now, this is going to become a negative 8 thirds, but when you take the negative of that, it would turn into a positive 8 thirds. And then this becomes uh, 4 divided by 2 would be 2, and it'll be the negative, so this will become a negative 2. And now it's just a matter of working with fractions. So we'll, this is, we've got a 3 and a 2, we'll put all these over 6. So this is going to become, this would be 12, 6, minus, multiply this one by 2 times 2, this would be 2, 6. And finally, one half would be three sixths minus. And here you can do this. You've got minus four minus two. This would become minus six plus eight thirds. Okay, that'll turn into twelve minus five, which would be seven six for this one minus. And since this is over 3, we'll put this one over 3. This would be like having minus 18 thirds 
plus 8 thirds. Well, that would be like having 7 6 minus, and this will turn into 18, minus 18 plus, so this will turn into a negative 10 thirds. Well, what that would be, that would be like having 7 6 minus, and we'll go ahead and put, since this is over 6, we'll put this one over 6, minus 26, which will turn out to be 7, 6 plus 26, which is 27, 6, and divide both those by 3, and you'll wind up with 9 halves. So it took a while to get there, but the final, the area between those two functions would be 9 halves. And mainly it was just a matter of algebra. So when you get the 9 halves, let's look back up at the top. Um, now again, the first step, if it gives you the two functions but doesn't give you the intersection points, you've got to find the intersection points. You've got to come over here and find, first step is find the intersection points. So set the two functions equal to each other, solve for x, that'll give you the limits on your integral. Then just integrate at the top one minus the bottom one, and really it's just all algebra from there. So plug it in, make sure you go through all the fractions, um, get the fractions straightened out, and you'll come up with the final answer. Now let's go back and take one last look at one more thing before we leave. Put it right there. Let's go back to this very first example, uh, just to, to show you Graphically, what this thing looks like is this. If you put a rectangle in, let's put it in, say, right about here. So right here, and go up to here, over to here, and down to here. So here is a rectangle. Now, graphically, what it looks like is this. This height right here would be, this is f of x. This height right here, the height of this rectangle would be g of x. So what's left over, this height in here, the height of this rectangle, would be f of x minus g of x. So in fact, that's what you're doing. You've got the, the entire height minus the g height will give you this right here. So f of x minus g of x, which is where this formula comes from. So that's an example of how to find the area between functions um, using vertical rectangles. In the next video, we'll look at how to do it using horizontal rectangles.